Hello, everybody. Hello, Facebook Live. Jamie's here. Hey, everybody. Um, Courtney's here somewhere, too. She just went out to the car. Um, so um, we are uh, going to talk about shrimp today really quick. But another thing that we're doing really quick is I, uh, the reason I didn't do my Facebook Live early this morning was because we, I had to run to Restaurant Depot. Um, we're getting uh, gloves. We're donating gloves uh, with the help of another one of our guests to, um, to the Roundup Valley Food Pantry. So they're getting six cases of latex gloves, uh, Roundup Valley Food Pantry. Um, do they have a website? I wonder if Roundup Food Pantry. Ask if they have a website, Jay. If other people want to donate. Um, so um, latex gloves. We're also giving away la vinyl gloves. There's a shortage on latex gloves. We're giving away latex gloves today. We're also giving away vinyl gloves. Um, you can come in and get a handful of vinyl gloves for uh, as a community service. Uh, we're finding that as a community service. So... Um, let me find out from the Roundout Valley Food Pantry if there's a website that... Uh, Roundout Valley Food Pantry, either .org or .com. Dot .org or dot, .com. Food Valley Pantry dot .org or .com. Okay. People can make donations on the yeah, site? They can. Okay, great. Thank so, you so much. You're welcome. Wonderful. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. So, six places of gloves going out. And I'm going to talk about shrimp. Um, a lot of things going on. We had a lot of, a lot of new things in at the restaurant. Um, so, you know, we've set up our, our grocery store. Um, so, uh, s organic sweet potatoes are back in stock yesterday. Uh, local butternut squash. Each one is tagged and weighed there. The butternut squash from Sam Scott Orchards. We have organic pears. We have local onions, organic tomatoes. Um, some really cool things up here. If you like Nutella, this is a reduced sugar vegan which means no milk products. Uh, Nutiva has milk solids in it. Uh, we just got more honey in today. Yeah, from delicious. We just got some, yeah, can you grab one of those, Jay? I'm really excited about that. Um, so here is uh, Wholesome Sweeteners Organic Agave. This is the agave that we use. Um, pomegranate juice came back in stock, beet juice, organic truffle oil, uh, the coconut aminos. We got a bunch of stuff going on here. Our freezers are full. We have more salmon coming in today. Um, no, I'm sorry, tomorrow. Uh, we have halibut coming in tomorrow and black cod coming in tomorrow. Um, I just got a... Oh, the, 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 the so, salted caramel. So we just got the salted caramel. You can't really um, see can you it. open up one of those? Yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna have one later. I think we're gonna. Have so it's ca the cash their cashew ice cream uh, from Soy Delicious. Uh, we do. Yep, non dairy. Um, so Jamie's unpacking that. That just got delivered. Uh, we got more Romanesco kale today. Okay, so let me just with the salted caramel cluster from. I'm gonna turn the camera on here. So. That just came in today. These are pints. I don't even know the price yet, but these are in the freezer next to the salmon or the all the other fish. Um, Jay, if you can grab a bag of that shrimp, I want to. I'm going to talk about shrimp today. Romanesco just came in. There's Romanesco. Um, those are my vitamins. Uh, more uh, uh, Reggiano, Reggiano cheese is here. We're going to split that up and cryer vac it. Um, I want to talk about shrimp too. So, um, let's see. Prosciutto. Oli prosciutto or oli prosciutto. Uh, it is vegetarian, gluten-free, uh, pork raised without hormones and antibiotics, never ever. That is, um, that is a, uh, a really awesome brand of American prosciutto, hormone-free, antibiotic-free. These come in three-ounce uh, packages. I want to just set my camera up while I... Um, talk about shrimp because this video is about shrimp. Um, I went to Restaurant Depot this morning to get gloves and a couple other things um, that uh, that we needed. A couple other supplies that we needed. Uh, some some disinfectant disinfectant sanitizer. Um, I got our, they have our, our organic agave there of all things. Um, the shelves are looking really empty in Restaurant Depot. Um, a little uh, concerning. And I asked the guy. Um, I was going through all the seafood again. Because they had a sign up, dry scallops, dry packed scallops, frozen dry scallop pallets, and the uh, uh, scallops, and the price was really good on it. And I was like, huh, let me take a look at these scallops. Let me investigate a little further and see what's going on with these scallops. And the sign said dry packed, great price. 
And I'm like, that's just too good of a price to be true for dry packed scallops. So folks, most of our seafood, most of the seafood that you buy, cheaper seafood that you buy, is um, filled with things. It has, um, has fillers. Uh, it's soaked, just like a lot of chicken is soaked with water. Uh, so uh, fish in general has sodium tripolyphosphate. Um, so it just, it plumps up, it plumps up the product. Uh, scallops are known to have water. They're packed with water and, and uh, other chems as well. Uh, they're not, frozen scallops are not usually chem free. Even fresh scallops are pumped with water. They're just, they're soaked in water and they, they absorb. So the cheaper product no longer becomes a cheaper product because when you cook it, the water cooks out and you have a smaller product. And scallops are notorious for this. If you put scallops in a pan, in a, in a saute pan, and cook them, you would see them shrink up, sometimes significantly, because that's the water cooking out of the scallops. That's what the manufacturer, the producer, the packer's doing. They're plumping them, they're adding water to add weight and dropping the price down. So people buy them and say, oh wow, this is really an inexpensive, cheap product. And in reality, um, it's just as expensive as the good dry pack scallops. So the science said dry pack scallops, frozen dry pack scallops. I said, okay, this is really cool. Uh, the price is awesome. I went over, I went through all the scallops there and I called the guy over and I said, I'm looking for the dry pack scallops. He goes, this is them right there. And I said, those aren't dry pack. Look over and read the label. He looks over and reads the label and it says scallops, water, and two chemicals were in the ingredient list. And he goes, huh. And I go, maybe it's just like, like, like maybe it's some skewed wrong here. Um, he goes, yeah, maybe it is. And then he looks at the uh, the boxes in storage, looks at the thing and goes, nope, that's what we're selling. I was like, those aren't dry scallops. He goes, um, no, they're not. And then he picked up another, he goes, and I go, no, turn it over, look at it. And he goes, I go, they're not dry scallops. You're not selling dry scallops. Um, I didn't tell him it was misleading, but it's misleading. Most chefs would have picked that up or most people would have picked that up and said, oh, dry scallops, these are awesome. They were all water packed, waterlogged scallops at a cheap price. Folks, you get what you pay for. Our scallops are $21.99, they are dry packed. These ones were like seven, six, five, six dollars cheaper a pound. Um, and I saw them and I was like, huh, I wonder why they're so cheap. Our scallops are $21.99 a pound. They are dry packed, no chemicals. You're not gonna, the only, the only moisture that comes off the scallop is the natural moisture in the scallop. Okay, so that's the big difference, natural moisture in the scallop versus stuff that they're soaking them and plumping them up with. Um, but I wanna talk about shrimp really quick. So shrimp, um, shrimp is one of those things that it's a hard thing to purchase. For me, I've always been torn in buying shrimp because shrimp is that one item that if you're buying wild shrimp, you're buying shrimp that is caught with a trawl, typically a bottom trawl, where they rake the bottom of the ocean, they destroy a lot of, 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 of the ecosystem, and they um, then um, have a lot of bycatch, and a lot of bycatch is not used. So, do you just wanna put that back? So a lot of the bycatch is not used, and it's wasted. So in the Forrest Gump movie, where they, where they literally dump all that shrimp onto the boat, that's not the reality of the shrimping world. Um, one out of every seven pounds of catch can be shrimp. The other stuff is unwanted bycatch that's discarded, sometimes dead, um, discarded back into the ocean. Uh, coral, things like that, that, that fragile coral that grows in, in, in the tropical climates, all that is just raked and um, it's the bottom of the ocean. There is mid trawl as well. Mid trawl is another way to catch things, but a lot of things are bottom trawled where they rake the bottom of the ocean. So. That's the one thing bad about wild shrimp. The good thing about wild shrimp is they're not raised in a mangrove, they're not polluting, they're not being fed hormones, antibiotics, and chemicals. If you look at some of these shrimp producers in Asia, like in Thailand or Bangladesh, really, um, India, these companies, these companies that come in and raise these shrimp and do these shrimp ponds, destroy, destroy the mangroves, destroy the community, destroy, pollute, um, it is the insane amount of pollution, uh, uh, filth, and chemicals that they spray. There's a couple of really great documentaries on farm shrimp and the chemicals that are in them and how the, the employees of the shrimp farm suffer. They suffer from health ailments because of the amount of toxic chemicals that go into the shrimp. They're using chemicals in some of these countries, um, like in Bangladesh, that they don't even allow in America, but they're pumping it full of the shrimp. And then this, this is the same shrimp that gets imported in to the US that we're eating. So when you go to the store and you see shrimp for seven, eight dollars a pound, look at the label of it, look behind it, it is going to be an inferior cheap farmed shrimp. 
So now, how does a chef like me say, okay, where do I buy shrimp? But farm shrimp is all farm shrimp out, is all wild shrimp out? Well, the answer is no, not all farm shrimp is out, not all wild shrimp is out. The very best wild shrimp to buy are going to be shrimp from uh, Alaska, spot prawns are in season in September. They're trap caught, so they're not net trawled on the bottom or trawled on the bottom. They're trap caught, which means a, a, like a lobster pot. You drop, or a crab pot, you drop the net, uh, the, the trap, they swim in, they get caught, you pick it up, you take the shrimp out, dump out anything else that got in there by accident. It's not a shrimp that's still alive that was not trawled through the bottom of the ocean um, and, uh, and put in like a tumbler-like effect. So that is, um, that's one thing. That's one way to buy shrimp is Alaskan spot prawns. Very, very pricey. They're actually more expensive than the scallops that we're selling. Um, a couple, few bucks more, almost 30 bucks a pound if you find them retail, even more. In New York City, when they're in season, in those three short weeks, uh, short weeks in September, they're probably over $30 a pound with the head on. You clean it, you throw the head off, you have 50% waste, and now all of a sudden you're at a $50 a pound shrimp once you peel up the vein and all that kind of super expensive. Not a shrimp for everyday use, especially for us here at the restaurant. I've bought them a couple of times in the past. Um, have not been able to have that luxury of buying Alaskan spot prawns on a regular basis. And it's not something you would cook for shrimp cocktail and eat a half a pound of this. You would literally take one or two shrimp and put it on a dish with a piece of halibut or, or, or other fish or put it on top of risotto. So it's a garnishing item. It's not a main dish item at that price. The other shrimp that is a sustainable catch with no bycatch issues and no habit, habitat destruction is main sweet shrimp. Those are the salad shrimp. But beware, because a lot of them are pumped with sodium tripolyphosphate or other chemicals. You need a truly chemical-free salad shrimp. And it's hard to make shrimp cocktail out of salad shrimp because they're small shrimp. They're true shrimp, quote unquote. Uh, no pun intended, they're true shrimp. So they are small. Um, so you could not literally sit there and, and make shrimp cocktail. I mean, this is stuff for like salad shrimp uh, to make shrimp salad with, but uh, to put on a salad. These are very sustainable um, and make sure they're no chem free. A lot of them have chems, you can, but you can buy them. They're on the market. You're going to pay more for them. All right. So um, now let's talk about farmed shrimp. Is there a good farmed shrimp? So there are specific farms that are in the U.S., um, that there might be one or two in Asia. There might be, um, you know, one in Mexico here or there. There might be some shrimp farms that are actually have better quality shrimp. No antibiotics, no phosphates. They're packing them chemical free. They're doing the right thing. Those fish farms are very far in between. Very far. We have a, we actually have a fish farm here in the Hudson Valley. And I've been trying to get to go see them and do a video. Um, they are actually in Newburgh. Everything's raised inside. So one of the issues with, with shrimp farms is they have these, man, the, the mangroves, they ruin the mangroves on the coasts because they go in there and they farm the shrimp there and it just destroys everything because all the filtered leaves, the chemicals and everything. So it, 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 it's a disaster. It's a literally disaster that happens in most shrimp farms. Um, so in Newburgh, they're raising shrimp that are actually raised in inside tanks. So you don't have them, um, you don't have the pollution, you don't have anything going, the waste and things, everything's filtered out, the water's reused, it's circulated back in. It's a much, much better system to raise shrimp, even to raise salmon. To farm raised salmon in that manner is a much, much more efficient and much less detrimental to the environment than throwing open nets, pens in the ocean, in the bays and doing that, but it costs seven times the amount to do that. So the average salmon farm doesn't want to spend seven million, they want to spend one million to open up a farm. So they don't want to spend a differential. Um, there's a comment here, Gulf shrimp. Gulf shrimp are, are raked on the bottom of the ocean. They take the trawls, they rake the bottom of the ocean, they destroy everything in its path, all the coral, all the other sea life. They rake it, they bring it up, a massive bycatch issue. Some of those bycatches are thrown back dead. Some uh, are thrown back barely alive, some are living. Um, it's basically, imagine your dryer, how your dryer's drying and tumbling all day. Imagine taking that kind of a mechanism and scraping the bottom of the ocean for miles in the, um, in the Gulf of Mexico. That's the reality of what's happening with most shrimp, how it's caught. There is a mid trawl. A mid trawl never really touches the bottom. Um, it's just, it, uh, it doesn't rake the bottom. It just touches, it's mid, it's in the water and it pulls this and, and, and catches things. But most Gulf shrimp is gonna be bottom trawled shrimp which is a very detrimental way to, to harvest shrimp. Now, 
if you could, if you go on to like um, Monterey Bay Aquarium, Seafood Watch, or MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council, or Friends of the Sea, or any of these other sea advocacy groups about, about seafood, you'll see that sometimes they'll lump an industry together. Like, okay, if you want sustainable Chilean sea bass, you're gonna get stuff that's landed in New Zealand, because that Chilean sea bass from New Zealand, down south there, is has the better quantities, better, better quotas. Uh, if you're getting um, uh, Chilean sea bass from um, uh, Argentina down in the bottom there, then that stuff is decimated. And so they'll actually lump together certain regions or certain, uh, certain regions because of better methods. So for you to look at every single country and how they farm shrimp, the one country that stands out, that stands out the most, the one country that, that shines all the time is going to be Ecuador. Ecuador is home as a blanket of the most sustainably raised shrimp. They're not allowed to go into the mangroves. They're not allowed to go into the coast. They have to stay in the mountains, in land. They have to, there's a, they have a very, a very, the, the government has put forth, put forth a very stringent system for farm raising shrimp in Ecuador. They don't want to happen what happened in Asia and destroying all the mangroves in Bangladesh. They don't want any of that. So um, they use this extensive farming method. Extensive farming method means shrimp ponds that have, are lower stocking density. These are government standards, lower stocking densities. In other words, less shrimp occupy a pond in Ecuador than in any other country in the world. Ecuador has the least population, least density. Um, Shrimp companies in Ecuador are vertically integrated and have an expert breeding program. Ecuadorian companies have been producing high quality uh, seafood. Um, uh, I don't know if I the best. So Ecuador is the very, very best country to buy farmed shrimp from. As a whole, you want Ecuadorian farm shrimp. We've been using Ecuadorian farm shrimp forever. If you go to a company called Ecofish, Ecofish is the company that has the gold st standard of approval on all sustainable seafood. Um, Henry Lovejoy pioneered Ecofish as a company that, that, that sold to restaurants, to chefs like me, only things that were sustainable. He didn't have other things that, that were questionable. It was a company that only sold top-end sustainable fish products to restaurants. He also developed a line for retail called Ecofish. You could buy it in the store. Now Ecofish has evolved to Henry and Lisa's Natural Seafood. You can buy Henry and, Nat Henry and Lisa's natural shrimp. They're white shrimp, and you look at it, it's a product of Ecuador. He is the, 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 he is the, the most, the, the authority as far as I'm concerned when it comes to a distributor, wholesale, and retail side that sets, to set, sets the gold standard for sustainable seafood that you can buy for your house, that he's it. His shrimp is farm-raised in Ecuador. That's where it comes from. Our shrimp, same specs, Ecuador. So do not go to the store and buy Bangladesh or Thai or any of these other, they, a lot of this stuff, especially Bangladesh shrimp, is a disaster. You can go online and look up documentaries of what they do in Bangladesh, especially in Bangladesh, because they can, um, they can basically um, um, go in and, and the government doesn't care. They think they're providing jobs or an economy and or providing things to communities, and they're not. They're just they're just raping the land and and making people sick. Um, Bonnie says, "Can you comment on Argentinian red shrimp?" I'm pretty sure Argentinian red shrimp are um, are wild caught. I'm pretty sure they're wild caught. I'm not a hundred percent sure of the Argentinian red shrimp industry. If you go to Seafood Watch, you can see. Um, why don't I just do a quick search on that and I can find out as well. So, um, Argentine red shrimp, um, same deep water shrimp, just wild caught. So, uh, let's see. Uh, So it looks like they have a better sustainability rating than other. Let's just go to, um, and you can go to places like, um, 
Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch and go to MSC. Um, I like a company called Fish Choice, fishchoice.com. It's a website um, that helps chefs, restaurants, restaurant owners. Um, it is, um, it helps distributors. It helps producers, packers get their products out and educate. And when you go on their site, I couldn't log in the other day. For some reason, um, I was having problems logging in. And um, not because I, 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 I was just trying to look, look, look up a source for something. And what happens is, um, ooh, what happens is they'll rate every, if you type in like Albacore Tuna Pacific Northwest, they'll do MSC, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, Friends of the Sea, they'll do all these advocacy groups that you may never even heard of that rate it across the board. So you can see what the consensus is from what all these advocacy groups are saying. So Argentinian red shrimp on the Monterey Bay Aquarium, it says avoid because the catch method here is bottom trawl. And the nice thing about Monterey Bay Aquarium is they will list how products are caught. So it's bottom trawl, they're raking the bottom of the ocean. Um, which is probably the big issue, but it is a an avoid. Um, Argentinian red shrimp are an avoid. So, and then it gives the gives a whole report um, that you can read. Um, their uh, industry bottom trawl, the avoid list, high amount of bycatch, and serious concern in the fishery includes several at risk species. So, some of the bycatch of red on red red Argentinian shrimp is that they're catching in the bycatch other species that are at risk, which means they don't have a strong population. So um, that is one of the main problems. Um, so you can go on and see um, all the stuff from, from there. So uh, Argentinian red shrimp is on the avoid list if you're looking at Monterey Bay Aquarium. I'm not in fish choice, fishchoice.com. By the way, our shrimp is $12.50 a pound. Um, it's far different again than the, than the stuff you're gonna buy at ShopRite for eight bucks a pound. Far, far, totally different type of shrimp, all right? You cannot even compare. I doubt you can go into ShopRite or I know you can't go into Walmart. I know you can't go into Sam's Club. Maybe Costco might have something comparable, um, but most of, those, most of those stores do not have a product that is going to be from Ecuador, packed without phosphates, chemical-free. Um, so um, right there on the label, all right? So none of that stuff is in these. And again, that is because Ecuador as a whole has set standards from the government of doing no mangroves. You cannot go into the mangroves. This is one of the big things they do in Asia. They destroy the mangroves. They deplete it of everything, and these mangroves are totally dead, dried out, um, finished, toast. So th th they're not allowed to do that in in, Equ in Ecuador. So um, we have like two bags of shrimp left, and we have another case coming today. We're selling this like crazy, 12.50 a pound. These are two pound bags. And the neat thing about this is, these shrimp are individually frozen. So you open the bag and you take out the shrimp that you want. You take out six shrimp, you take out 10 shrimp, and that's it. And you put the rest back in the freezer. Grab right from the freezer, thaw it. It takes minutes to thaw, minutes to minutes to thaw. You put a handful of this in a little container of some cold water. Don't leave your water running, it wastes water. Try not to leave your water running. Put in a little cold water and it'll be thawed in no time. You leave it in your refrigerator overnight, they're thawed. You leave it on the counter for a half an hour, they're basically thawed if they're spread out flat. Um, one of the best ways to thaw things, by the way, folks, if you want to do a rapid thaw, a lot of us chefs were trained in the kitchen. You throw stuff in a bucket, a pot, a plastic container, you turn the water on, and you let the water run on it for an hour, two hours. I've never allowed that here at Aroma Time. If chefs come in, cooks come in from other places, and so first, I wanted to thaw shrimp first. No, you do not, that's a waste of water. Um, you have to properly thaw overnight in the refrigerator is the best way. If it's on the fly, which means we need it now, the best way that I found is with a fan. You line your product up um, and you put a fan on it and you blow air on it through a circulator, through a fan. You do this at home, you'll have products thawed out like that instantly. Within 20 minutes, you can thaw out a steak, whatever you want, just by having a fan just blowing right on it because it's air. Make sure it's packaged. So make sure it's not just raw product lined up because if it's raw product lined up, that fan is gonna pull anything in from, let's say it has a filter or something, it's going to pull anything in and 
pump it through, pump it right onto your product. All right, so you don't want to avoid that. You want to make sure things are covered. That's one of the most efficient ways. So again, folks, we have free gloves as a public service, as a community service, free gloves. Come and get some free ionized water, high electron rich water, high antioxidant water, um, alkaline water, micro clustered so it absorbs into your body better. Um, the best water you can drink out there. We're giving it away for free. If you go to a, a high-end water shop and you buy this water, it'd be $1.50 a gallon. We're giving it away for free. We filled up again like 15, 20 gallons yesterday of it. This is what I put into my mason jar every day and I fill up four of these. Two of these get filled up with vitamin C water and two of these get filled up with regular water and this is what I drink out the course of the day so I drink my gallon of water. Folks, you need to stay healthy. You have to stay healthy. They are learning. I, 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 on my drive today, I listened for two hours, for two hours. I listened to more people that were doing research on coronavirus. I listened to, to very insightful things. I listened to a lot of great doctors. I listened to people that were being interviewed, okay? The majority of, the majority of cases as a whole are people that have an, another underlying issue. Doesn't matter what age group you're in. The, this, this, this guy was reading this study and he was saying that if we just treated people for asthma or heart disease or obesity, it would strengthen their immune system and we could, they, they could be better treated for coronavirus. But they're not treating people for other ailments. They're just treating them for coronavirus and the, a lot of the underlying things are not being addressed. Um, something that was really interesting was that you know, they, they, the guy went through the stats of the numbers of the age groups and everything, really interesting. And of course, again, we all know, they all, they told us for years, we all know this, CDC, the government, our doctors, it's always told us, people that have weakened immune systems are at, at risk of anything, anything. This is why they say older people need to get the flu shot. This is why they say older people need to, you know, this and that. This is why they, this is why the young, young people that have their de development, their, their, their um, immune systems aren't developed for people with, with lupus or, or other uh, diseases. They don't have a developed immune system and these people are at risk more. We all, we all know this. this is common knowledge. We've been told this for so long. So this doctor also said, okay, now look at the maps. A lot of the places that are getting this have the highest pollution levels. So pollution is going to, to um, weaken your immune system. That's one of the factors that will weaken your immune system is pollution. And he, this guy graphed it out and I was like, wow, that, okay, this is another thing that I haven't heard yet about pollution. Now, there is all kinds of pollution, environmental pollution, toxins, things like that. And there's also pollutions of your phone, your computer, all these, mag, uh, all these electronics, I, I've, told, I've told people, microwaves, no, don't use a microwave. We know if you microwave something, there's warnings. You don't stand in front of it with your face to it. If you're pregnant, you shouldn't be in the kitchen while the microwave is on. There's warnings in hospitals, this contains a microwave in this room or public, or public places. You've seen those signs for years. I haven't seen them often. I don't know if the, those, they're taking the signs down or the, there's no more microwaves. But we've seen those signs. There are issues with that. It gives off these frequencies that are not congruent with our body, congruent with our health, congruent with our immune system. So the worst thing you should be doing right now is sticking your phone to your ear, sleeping with your phone next to you, having your TV plugged in all the time. If you're not using your TV, folks, unplug the TV. Just unplug it. It's pulling the energy, it's pulling, it's pulling, it's pulling all that and it's, it's emitting even when it's off. So, um, but this doctor was like, like you take people's weakened immune systems and you add a community like Wuhan, New York City, LA, you add these communities that now have pollution that's weakening people's immune systems even more. And that is one of the co-factors of, of this. And it was just an interesting thing. So folks, I know I'm up here in the country, get out and enjoy the sun. It's sunny today, I'm going on another bike ride today, again, or a hike, I'm doing something. Get out and enjoy the sun, absorb the vitamin D, breathe the fresh air, being locked up in your house might not be the most ideal thing these people are saying. You need to, if you need to be quarantined, you still need sunlight, you still need fresh air, you still need that. When you're inside your house, things things will, um, they can't escape as easily and things, you know, obviously get recirculated inside your house. So, um, very, very important for that. Um, anything else I can say about current health updates that, I, that I've been too, but I just thought that was very interesting. And he actually went through the age groups and the immune compromised people. And he, they actually, the, the thing that he was saying was that coronavirus was, and two doctors said this, that coronavirus is 
pretty weak because a lot of us have already been exposed to it. A lot of us never, never had symptoms. A lot of us just fought it off because we have healthy immune systems. But when you add other things like eating sugar, eating donuts, drinking that sweetened coffee every morning, um, having heart disease, having obesity, lack of exercise. When you, add, when you add in all these other things, these other cofactors, that's where it actually um, proliferates. That's where it proliferates. And a normal, healthy person, coronavirus is actually weak, is what he was saying. Two doctors were saying this that I was listening to. Two hours I listened this morning on my car ride. So... Um, Gil's saying, need to place a grocery order. So if you want to place a grocery order, folks, the best thing to do is to go onto our website and go on to, click the link that says groceries, go to the list. It's up, the list is updated twice a day, sometimes three times a day, because we're adding things all the time, like Romanesco just came back in stock. Look at this beautiful Romanesco cauliflower. Amazing Romanesco. Um, I just got Reggiano cheese today, so I'll be cutting up some, some Parmesan, some Reggiano cheese. These... Um, three ounces or four and three ounces of prosciutto from Oli are amazing. Hormone-free, antibiotic-free, uh, vegetarian-fed uh, pork. Uh, USA product, by the way, too. Um, go on to there, click the link that says um, um, groceries. Go on there and email us. Email us is the best. Info at aromatimebutual.com. It's on the website. Your first line of the email should say, please confirm this order. All right, then Jamie or I, Jamie will send you a message back, order confirmed. It doesn't mean we have everything. Like I have 12 heads of Romanesco cauliflower here right now. We will probably sell out of those today. So if you're the 13th person that wants it today, I'm sorry, but we won't know that until later. So don't expect your whole order to be fulfilled. Just just something that, that we, we are out of control. I don't, I'm not set up like a grocery store to speak to the full extent. And I don't know things that we're gonna be selling. I brought in two sleeves of, of cashew so delicious a salted caramel and you know it could sit around here for a week jamie and i could probably eat half of it or it could sell out like that we don't know these things so this is all new to us so have a little um lead way or forgiveness on stuff like that we keep bumping our orders up of things we know we're selling flats of strawberries organic strawberries one day they last and they're gone um kale you buy a case that lasts three days so you know there's there's certain things that last certain things that don't we're learning as we go sweet potatoes went like that um, butternut squash, we brought it in yesterday. I didn't sell one butternut squash yesterday. They're local butternut squash. IPM, Integrated Pest Management, means they're not throwing a ton of chemicals. They're more in an organic fashion. It's called IPM, Integrated Pest Management. Sam Scott Orchards uh, up near Rhinebeck. They're the ones who also do our apple cider. We have got eight gallons of apple cider in yesterday. I think we sold almost all the way through half of those. The week before, we got four in. So as we figure out what we need, we bring more in. We got milk in today for people. We can special order milk, organic organic milk uh, from Organic Valley. We're not price competitive with milk just because it's a commodity item and ShopRite buys truckloads of it and we're not that competitive. But if you don't want to avoid ShopRite, we can help you out for almost the same cost or maybe a dollar more for the organic milk. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I know, I know it's probably maybe the same price-ish. Um, but if you want to avoid going to the shop right for Organic Valley Organic Milk, then we can get you covered. It's a special order. Um, and I do know that our distributor was um, rationing us on milk. We couldn't get enough milk to fulfill all the orders. So we had to wait another day to get more and another day to get more. So they were shipping it out in so many, many spurts. I did, Restaurant Depot today, they have a two-case limit for gloves. I was able to get like eight cases um, because we're six cases got donated uh, or at least six they're all gone they, this is the beginning of the video uh the roundup valley food pantry we donated a bunch of gloves to the roundup valley food pantry that's something they were in need roundupvalleyfoodpantry.org or com. go online and you can um get stuff or donate stuff to them um jamie says, can we talk about local milk yes so we can get local milk ronnie brook milk we got ronnie brook yogurt yesterday there's a few ronnie brook low fat plain or maybe vanilla yogurts i'm not sure what they are but they're in, they're in court containers um we have those left um we can get some ronnie brook milk i just have to check the quantities and what's in stock but ronnie brook can come from a couple of our, our distributors so if you do want ronnie brook milk I, that's probably the best way to go thank you for reminding me on that jamie i'm in the restaurant jamie's in the office which is in a separate building from us here all right so hopefully i didn't even ask for comments today but if anybody wants to drop a live comment hashtag live or hashtag replay if you're watching this that'd be fantastic um sean's saying Black cod, sablefish, butterfish today. 
it's coming tomorrow. It got delayed in shipping. Our supplier is running behind on their orders as well. We have halibut coming tomorrow, black cod, also known as sablefish, um, which is what it goes by typically, sablefish, or it's also called butterfish. It was a nickname given by Ming Tsai back in the late 90s. Uh, it was called butterfish because you broil this fish and it just eats like butter. It is an amazing, amazing fish, sablefish. Uh, sablefish is one of those fish that they smoke. So um, if you get ever get smoked sablefish or smoked black cod, that's exactly what it is. It is an amazing, amazing fish. Um, same price as the halibut. Uh, our halibut is Alaskan halibut. If you buy halibut, you only want to buy Alaskan halibut. There's quota systems on it, strictly monitored. Um, if you're buying Atlantic halibut, you'll see a price difference. That's because there's less quotas, the species not as strong, um, it's been decimated. So one is sustainable, one's not sustainable, and you're paying for the price difference. They will fish, they will fish Atlantic cod like almost all year, I think. Uh, Pacific cod is very rationed, and here the season's open. Um, for this short amount of time and that's it and we want to make sure that the numbers are strong and that they're catching so that's it for there um, I spent a lot of time in this video talking about Ecuadorian shrimp Ecuadorian shrimp being the best of of the farmed shrimp as a country as a whole Ecuador has set the standards set the precedence for farmed shrimp has the lowest density of any country allowed. They don't do. They don't fly out the mangroves and destroy them. It has. Um, they're up in their inland systems or ponds. They're drained. The fresh water. It's. It, it's really a, a much more a much better approach to um, to fish farming. A much much better for salmon. Salmon. So, um, hi Marcus. Is your vitamin C drink say buffered vitamin C powder? Just want to make sure I got the right one. So I do buy buffered. Um, but I gotta be honest with you, a couple weeks ago, I took whatever they had. So, but I do typically buy non-acidic or buffered vitamin C, typically. Um, I also take slippery elm bark, because that helps my digestion and um, helps with any kind of acid foods or something. I take two capsules in the morning, and I found once I started taking that, it improved my digestion. Folks, as we age, we lose stomach acids, we lose, we lose we just lose the ability to digest what we used to digest. So if you find yourself all of a sudden having terrible acid reflux as you age, that's normal. Um, that's part of the aging process. There are things you can do, like eat better food, first of all, um, have a better gut bacteria. Um, so it, it sort of isn't part of aging. It's part of, of what we've done in our diet, and it's, it's we can correct that. Um, a slippery elm bark is amazing. Uh, a friend told me that. Uh, a couple months ago and I've been taking it religiously and I'm like, wow, like I've only had like one night where I've had acid reflux after taking this, um, any kind of digestion issues. So I was like, this is amazing. Um, I'm the kind of person if I have um, tomatoes at night, cooked tomatoes, wheat, um, pasta with tomato sauce, it would kill me at night and not anymore from taking that slippery elm bark. Of course, I'm not a doctor, but I'm telling you what works for me because I study this stuff a lot and I, I um, experiment and I've, uh, with myself and I find things that do work. So, um, but I encourage you to always do your own research or talk to a health counselor or somebody who knows, um, knows this. Um, and again, a lot of doctors do not know nutrition. They're not nutritionists. There's a doctor and there's a nutritionist. So a lot of doctors do not know nutrition. So if your doctor tells you that you have high cholesterol and there's not much you can do to alter your diet, you're talking to the wrong person. If you talk to a nutritionist that is trained in true holistic health, they will tell you. If you talk to a nutritionist who's trained by the ADA, the American Dietetic Association, which is funded by Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Big Pharma, and the junk food industry, the junk food industry funds them, they will tell you, well, there's really not much you can do um, because their training is there to protect because where the funding is coming from is there to protect, unfortunately, their sponsors and their donors, um, um, their sponsors that give them lots of money. I mean, Pepsi and Coke give the ADA in tune of like three, four million dollars a year. So when you, every time you buy a soda product like Coke or Pepsi, part of that money that you're paying, part of those profits, part of that dollar goes to them to corrupt the system of the officials, the doctors, the, 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 the nutritionists. And by the way, to be in a hospital, to be a nutritionist, dietitian, you have to have ADA credentials. So you have to go through training sponsored by Coke, Pepsi, um, Big Pharma, um, the junk food industry, the sugar industry, all these kind of things are funding. So 
if you're going to listen to one of them, they're probably not going to tell you a true perspective. I had an argument with the dietitian in Westchester Hospital in Valhalla a couple years back. Um, she insisted that corn syrup metabolize in your body the same way an organic pear does. She insisted me that there was no difference in a spoonful of corn syrup and a fresh organic pear. And I had to explain to her enzymes, fibers, cellulose, and how this digests and how, the, I had to explain to her. And she, I'm not sure if she knew it or not, but that was her official position was corn syrup and a pear is the same. So if it's okay to eat a pear, it's okay to eat corn syrup. And this is why hospital food is laden with corn syrup, okay? Corn syrup is not something you wanna eat. First of all, it's GMO. Second of all, it tricks your brain. Um, it, it's the one thing that food manufacturers know. You put this in their food, it's cheap. It's a cheap filler, it tricks you, makes you keep eating. It's causing obesity. There's study after study after study. But the, they can't get past this logic because they have these credentials. So sometimes, we listen to people with the wrong credentials. Um, there are some great doctors that are with nutrition. I've had some amazing conversations with doctors and nutrition, medical doctors, but typically a medical doctor has to go onto his own and research and do that on his own. Not, it's not part of their medical system. They're trained to treat symptoms and with, with drugs and pharmaceuticals. It's just a different system. Not saying it's bad or good, just a different system. So you need to go to the right person. So if you say, my doctor says, you know, I can still keep eating, nothing's going to make a difference. Talk to a nutritionist, holistic nutritionist, and they will tell you that it does make a difference. They will give you the, they will empower you to make better choices. So that's just the difference, okay? So, um, all right, folks, that's it for now. I've got a bunch of work to do today. Um, we've got to deliver a bunch of food. Um, uh, we've got to pack up the van and make some grocery deliveries. We can do that. Um, on some bigger orders, if you call ahead of time, um, we can do that. Most of our deliver, most of our grocery orders that go out are almost a thousand dollar orders, um, so we have no problem packing up big orders like that and shipping them out. Um, so um, we can run 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 across here. Um, but if you wanted a few cases of salmon and things like that, you know, the best thing to do is just come here and pick up. Um, Sean is saying separated the five pounds of scallops worked perfectly. Thank you. So yes. So scallops are one of the only things in calamari that we sell that is not individually frozen. Scallops come in a block. And what I suggested to everybody this, you take a colander and a sink, a strainer. You drip some cold water on. Don't run it for an hour because you're wasting water. Drip some cold water on it. And you'll be able to, after 10, 20, 30 minutes, you'll be able to start taking clumps of scallops off. The clump you want to eat for that night, you put in the refrigerator. The rest of the clumps, you wrap them back up and you put them in your freezer and you save them for a later date. Um, I apologize, but that is the only way we can get our scallops. And when I was in uh, um, um, uh, this morning in uh, Restaurant Depot and I saw the sign that said dry scallops and the great price and they were individually quick frozen, IQF'd, uh, so they're individual. I was like, huh, let me, let me, this, in, this, this, in, this um, uh, merits an investigation over here and let me take a look. And I told a story in the beginning of the video that all the scallops, are, even though they said dry scallops, dry packed scallops, all the frozen scallops, you turn it over, every one of them was packed with scallops water, scallops water, scallops water. And I called the seafood guy over, I'm like, where are the dry scallops at here? He goes, they're right here. And he puts it in the bag, I go, those aren't the dry scallops. Flipped it over and I showed him, he goes, oh yeah, huh. So then he bag, grabs me another bag and I flip it over and I said, those aren't dry packed either. And he's like, well, that's what we've been selling. Buyer beware, you have to read the ingredients, and then it had two chemicals behind it. Water, scallops, and two, or scallops, water, and two chemicals was basically what was in these. It might have even been, yeah, water, I think water was, I took a picture of it. I took a picture, it's on my phone. Because I was like, you know what, I just gotta take a picture of this, this is crazy. It says dry scallops and they're water packed scallops. They add water, they add sodium tripolyphosphate, they add things like that, they soak chicken, they plump them, they put them in solutions, and these quote unquote, if you ever see like, it says brined chicken breast, Brined chicken breast means plumped. It means that they plumped it with a salt solution so they could pack more cheap weight onto it so they could sell it to you uh, and make more money from a salt solution, from a saline solution, from a solution, a brining solution in your chicken or whatever it says. It says brine this, brine that. You can, you can brine it yourself at home. You take, if you wanna do a brine, this is, a, this is the standard recipe for a brine. 
You want to brine a turkey. You want to brine um, chicken thighs. You want to brine a pork loin. One gallon of water, half cup of salt, high quality, high quality salt. We use Redmond Real Salt. Half cup of salt, cup and a half of, uh, we use, well, I like coconut sugar, evaporated coconut sap. Um, half a cup of salt, cup and a half of sugar, one gallon of water. That's the standard ratio for a brine. So if you're smoking salmon, that's what you use. Then of course for salmon, you might wanna add some coriander, some dill, you wanna add some other things and let that flavors infuse in. So what a brine does is it plumps up the product. It goes into the cells and it absorbs in, it plumps it up. So when you smoke something like chicken thighs, they are, um, they're juicier. We do that with our chicken thighs. That's how, that's how we make them juicy. So you don't, sh you shouldn't be paying for a store to do that for you because they're charging you for water, salt, and sugar is what they're charging you for, the brine. That's it, that's all. Um, and they're charging you a lot for it. You wanna buy stuff that's not plumped. If you wanna brine it, brine it yourself. There's the recipe. One gallon of water, half a cup of salt, cup and a half of sugar, high quality salt, high quality sugar. Um, and that's it for that. So, all right, folks, if you add more salt than that, um, you can create something very salty if you don't. I like, we like to soak it overnight, eight to 12 hours is maximum with that ratio. If you're gonna soak it longer, you cut down on the salt. If you wanna soak it quicker, four hours, you bump the salt up. But at that point, that much salt to that much water, it's gonna have a problem dissolving it. So we boil water, half the water, put the salt in, let it evap, let it, let it absorb in in hot water, and then throw ice on it and chill it and then throw our product in. So, so just a way to, to make the salt absorb totally in it or more. In fact, our salt doesn't even dissolve all the way because 98% of it's salt and 2% of it is minerals and, and other, other things that are in the salt naturally that will never dissolve in water because it's not water soluble. So um, that's why pink salt, there's always things left in the bottom when you, when you put salt in the water. Those are the natural particles in the salt, the natural minerals and elements of the salt. All right, folks, I've got to get going. We'll talk to you later. Go to aromatimebistro.com. Check out our grocery list. Tonight's burger night. Not, uh, 9 dollars burgers. We have a uh, venison burger tonight that's a few more bucks because venison costs a few more bucks. Venison almost costs twice the price, so I can't let it go for $9.99, our venison burgers. But we have a nice venison burger on tonight for... $12.99. You can do our chickpea burger for $9.99. You can do our beef burgers for $9.99. Um, six, four, seven, three thousand. Place your orders. I will send, send an email out here very soon. And uh, that's it, folks. Um, looks like another delivery is here now. And we'll talk to you later. Oh, beer. Rumor has it, case of heady toppers on the truck that just came in. Um, so stay tuned for our posts on Instagram and Facebook. Hetty Topper, um, first come, first serve Hetty Topper. You can't take it out. Um, Hetty Topper is the quintessential IPA beer that most breweries look at and say, we want to make this. Um, it has inspired a lot of brewers, Hetty Topper. It is from the Alchemist, so there is a case on that truck that just pulled in. So, all right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Hashtag live, if you're tuning in live, hashtag replay on the replay. Drop a comment where you're tuning in from. Mary says, hi, hi, Mary. Uh, Christina, uh, Sean left a comment. Kathy, Dean is on. Um, everybody, thank you very much. Just trying to scroll and see who else is on. We really appreciate the support, Barbara. Barbara from Top Shelf yesterday hooked us up with some really cool designer masks from, um, uh, that she made us. Really, really cool. Thank you, Barbara, very much. As of last night, if we are in public, if we're serving the public, so if I'm in face with you in the public, um, within six feet, I have to have my uh, mask on. Um, that's the new regulation. The issue I have with this is people are wearing the same mask over and over and over and over without cleaning them. That is not good, folks. You need to spray your mask down with hydrogen peroxide. Get sprayed down with hydrogen peroxide, Lysol, bleach, wash them. I literally, um, how's it going? How are you doing? Good, right in the back door. No, no. I okay. Just sure yep, we're here. So, um, that is the issue. I spoke to somebody in the medical profession yesterday, just one of the many people I spoke to in the medical profession yesterday. They're wearing the same mask, like multiple days in a row, all right? So there's a serious shortage on masks. If anybody needs masks, I can get masks. The 95s, there's a stipulation. They're shipped in from New Zealand and they're at a, an amazing, amazing price, like amazing price. 
no broker sheets, this or that, but we have to take a million at a time. So if anybody wants to step up um, with some big bucks, we can, we can start importing masks from New Zealand at a really great price, no broker fees, things like that. I have an amazing source. Uh, this company has turned some, they're, they're, all their dairy barns into a face mask uh, production. They've renovated everything and now they're producing um, face masks like crazy. Um, I can get those here. They charter, the company charters their own flights now and brings you know, deliveries into the US on a daily basis. But we have to take a million at a time. Um, um, and the price that it is, um, there's a lot, a ton of profit to be made in there um, without without even gouging anybody, without even gouging a single person and selling it below the price, there's a, a, an immense amount of profit to be made. Um, I just don't have uh, the whereabouts, the financial ability to bring in a million masks um, by myself. So if anybody wants to step up and talk about bringing masks in and doing something like that, um, we can do that. Um, 95 masks out of New Zealand, um, direct from the source, no brokerage fees, nothing like that. So, but the problem with the masks, folks, is people are using them. They're touching their masks because they have to constantly adjust the masks. So you're constantly touching a surface and then you're touching your mask. There's gaps in there. Um, there's agencies are saying, certain people are saying that the, these masks are useless. They're actually more causing more harm than good because the way people are misusing them. Um, but according to Cuomo, we have to have another executive order. I have to have a mask on during my business hours if I'm in contact with people. Um, so unfortunately, that's the situation. Um, so hopefully, people that are wearing these masks are being safe. I know we wore them last night after 8 o'clock and that we, they were already washed today and I have enough for my staff and I know they're uncomfortable and I know it's hard to breathe and I know all that kind of stuff, but it's the law right now. All right, folks, and I think as of Friday, if you go out in public, if you're not within six feet from somebody, you have to have a mask in public. Um, I think it's counterproductive um, because, like I said, again, a lot of people are going to be misusing these and a lot of them don't work to begin with because the coronavirus is so, so, so small that you need to have a really, really, really good mask. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later.